Yes, this ride. I like this ride. I don't know how, but I do. I went into Kong at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom with very low expectations. This was going to be the first Vekoma SLC I've ever ridden. And right before that, I rode the Boomerang at Discovery Kingdom. And that was really fun. It was really underrated, but it doesn't deserve its own video. There's a few things I want to talk about. Let's get into the video. For those of you who don't know, Kong at Discovery Kingdom is a Vekoma SLC, or a suspended looping coaster. Vekoma basically made a budget version of the B&M Invert. And overall, the reputation for most of these coasters is bad. Very bad. These coasters are notorious for the pain they inflict on the riders. Flight Deck at Canada's Wonderland. Mind Eraser at Darien Lake. Mind Eraser at Six Flags America. All of these rides were known to be very rough and very painful. People will talk about how terrible the restraints are like all day. The restraints are very bulky. They have like two very giant pads that are right next to your ears. And because of the very poor track work, you will get a lot of headbanging. I mean, it's not even just headbanging. Your whole body will bump up and down. So far, this ride experience doesn't sound very pleasant. And it isn't. It's not a pleasant ride. It's very intense. And I can admit the track work is terrible. But in my opinion, that doesn't make it a bad ride. Yeah, the padding is right next to your ears, but the padding is very soft. I don't know if that is the case for other Vekoma SLCs, but that is the case for this ride. I mean, if the padding was very hard, this would be a very different situation. I would probably think this was one of the worst rides in the world. But it isn't, and uh, thank goodness for that. And I think a lot of people know this, but then the layout on a Vekoma SLC is actually a pretty good layout. Disregarding the imperfect track profiling, this could be a very solid and intense inverted coaster. Now let's get to the bumpiness. This also doesn't hurt. I don't know why people don't like this ride, but it just doesn't hurt. I don't get it. Maybe it's because my expectations were so low that I thought this ride was actually better be because it exceeded my very low expectations. But I ranked this ride above Scream at Six Flags Magic Mountain. So I don't think that was just a fluke. Anyways, let's just get into the layout. This first drop was kind of bad, not gonna lie. It didn't give any airtime, of course. It was a twist and drop. It was very shallow, but it wasn't disappointing. I mean, it's an inverted ride. Did you expect there to be airtime? Anyways, the ride is kind of rough so far, but it isn't too bad. Next up is some sort of double inversion that I don't know what it's called. But then the entry into this inversion when you just turn upside down is one of the roughest part of the ride. Next up was a wave turn. This really didn't do anything. It wasn't rough, painful, or forceful. And then we head into this Immelman Sidewinder thing. The Immelman itself was really intense, but the transition from the Immelman to that helix is very janky. It didn't hurt, but that was definitely the roughest part of the ride. Next up, we got the two inline twists. These two elements were really fun. They were a little bit rough, but it wasn't too bad. Keep in mind, there was headbanging throughout this entire coaster and it didn't hurt one bit. These two elements were really fast paced and had a lot of near misses in the supports. The transition from the inline twist into the turn into the brakes was pretty janky. I found that the roughness and jankiness added more to the experience kind of because it was really fun to be bouncing in your seat while on a roller coaster. The break run was also surprisingly harsh. It didn't take away from the ride experience, I just wanted to point that out. It was also super funny how my head was banging from the turn into the station. Anyways, I think I've said enough. That's all I've got for you. See you in the next video.